Here are the top stories for today, March 4, 2021. A sign of unrest, FIVOX raises alert level 1 over Mount Pinatubo but says an eruption is far from reality. After Metro Manila, other parts of the country are also gearing up for the rollout of their COVID-19 vaccination drives. Amid the easing of travel restrictions, some provinces still require negative RT-PCR test results. And no mandatory inoculation for workers, the Labor Department says a no-vaccine, no-work policy affirms is illegal. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story today, alert level 1 is up over Mount Pinatubo due to increasing volcanic quakes. The country's seismology agency chief Renato Solidum says the volcano will not erupt soon, but residents should take precautions. So, I, tectonic na uh, kaganapan mm. paggalaw ng mga fault. Pero hindi po namin namamataan ang pagsabog nito sa nalalapit ng panahon or uh, imminent corruption. Wala po tayong makikita. Mm-hmm. Pero kailangan po natin yung pag-ingatan sa kasunukuyan ng pinatubo. Mm-hmm. At uh, sana po, kung uh, pupunta naman sa uh, pinatubo, ay wag na sana pumasok sa loob ng crater nito kung hindi naman kinakailangan. Mm-hmm. At kung kailangan naman pumasok sa loob ng crater, ay dapat iba yung pag-iingat ang kailangan natin gawin. At least 700 people died and over 20,000 residents were evacuated during the volcano's massive eruption in June 1991, which left a trail of destruction in its surrounding areas in the provinces of Pampanga and Zambales. Meanwhile, FIVOX is also monitoring three other volcanoes under alert level 1. These are Taal in Batangas, Mayon in Albay, and Canlaon in Negros Oriental. President Rodrigo Duterte is concerned over the safety of his cabinet officials, particularly those who are at the forefront of the nationwide vaccine rollout. In an online briefing today, Cabinet Secretary Carlo Negrales said the president asked during yesterday's cabinet meeting when will these officials get vaccinated. Negrales said the vaccination of cabinet members will still have to be discussed with the National Immunization Technical Advisory Group or NITAG. Nograles said while it is true that they are exposed to the threat of the virus, the scheduled inoculation would still depend on the NITAG's decision. He was just asking about kung kailan yung cabinet members um, uh, inoculate. Um, so this is something that uh, we'll have to discuss with the uh, NITAG as well. No? Uh, gaya ng sinabi ko, ang proseso kasi natin ay dinadaan muna natin sa NITAG ang lahat ng uh, pagpaprioritize. Uh, but to the president's uh, mind and, and concern, I believe, is that uh, he considers us in the cabinet as also uh, frontline workers and uh, very much exposed. Also, no, uh, kita nyo naman, uh, lahat kami uh, umiikot sa mga hospital uh, doing the um, simultaneous ceremonial um, uh, inoculation. Um, in fact, next week, magkakaroon ng simultaneous inoculations also, no? na ceremonial inoculations in different regions. So, kumbaga, uh, masyado kami exposed, kaya nag-aalala lang si Pangulo. Nograles also revealed that it is likely that the whole country will be placed under the least restrictive modified general community quarantine or MGCQ by second quarter of 2021. He said this is possible once about 2 million vaccine doses have been rolled out as the country continues to pick up from the economic impact of the pandemic. Aside from the initial shipment of vaccines from Sinovac and AstraZeneca that earlier arrived, Negrala said the country is expected to receive another 1 million doses of Sinovac this March. It's day four of the COVID-19 vaccine rollout in the country. 
This time, it's the turn of Cebuano frontliners for the jabs. Some 700 healthcare workers at the Vicente Soto Memorial Medical Center were inoculated during the vaccination kickoff earlier today. Among those who also got inoculated were DOH Central Visayas Chief Pathologist Dr. Mary Jean Loreche, DOH 7 Regional Director Dr. Jaime Bernadas, and VSMMC Director Dr. Gerardo Aquino Jr. Around 2,700 doses of the Chinese-made jabs arrived at the Mactan Cebu International Airport yesterday. Some 100,000 doses of Coronavac jabs have already been deployed across the country. Vaccine Czar Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. made the announcement during the inoculation of frontliners at the St. Luke's Medical Center in Quezon City yesterday. Galvez, together with Health Secretary Francisco Duque III and other government officials, led the inoculation of frontliners at the private hospital. St. Luke's Medical Center President and CEO Dr. Art de la Peña encouraged health workers to be vaccinated. The national government earlier approved the hospital's request for 5,000 doses of Coronavac jabs. After Metro Manila, other parts of the country are also gearing up for the rollout of their COVID-19 vaccination drives. Benj Mondok has the details. More than 17,000 vials of Sinovac's Coronavac jabs arrived in Cagayan de Oro City earlier today. The vaccines were transported to the Department of Health Northern Mindanao Regional Office. Frontliners at the Northern Mindanao Medical Center will be the first in the region to receive the jabs tomorrow. Meanwhile, a second batch consisting of over 21,000 doses of Coronavac jabs arrived in Davao as the city will also roll out its vaccination of frontliners tomorrow. The jabs were taken to the DOH Davao Regional Office for cold storage management. The Bicol region also received this morning its allocation of at least 12,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccines. These were then taken to the DOH Bicol Center for Health Development from the Legazpi City Airport in Albay. Almost 6,000 frontliners in four pilot hospitals will be inoculated in the Bicol region, which will begin tomorrow. An initial batch of 4,200 doses of Coronavac jabs also arrived in Dato Odinsin Suwat, Maguindanao. The jabs will be given to medical frontliners of the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Bench Bondo. More stringent measures are in place in Pasay City to contain the South African variant of coronavirus disease. Mayor Emi Calixto Rubiano said contact tracing and tests are still ongoing as three residents have reportedly contracted the disease. Rubiano said the patients will still have to undergo series of tests to control the local transmission of the variant. At least 77 barangays have been placed under localized enhanced community quarantine, while one of these barangays is under total lockdown. Some 180 police personnel have been tasked to enforce stricter community quarantine protocols, while 100 contact tracers augmented the massive contact tracing efforts. The World Health Organization, or WHO, says it will allocate COVID-19 shots to more than 100 countries by the end of May. In a tweet, WHO Director General Tedros Ghebreyesus says 11 million vaccine doses will be delivered this week and 237 million shots allocated to 142 economies and countries through the COVAX facility for equitable distribution of jabs. Tedros says 624,000 COVID-19 vaccine doses arrived in Angola, Southern Africa on Tuesday. Frontline health workers and vulnerable groups at high risk of COVID-19 will be prioritized for the jabs. Tedros says the WHO established the Access to COVID-19 Tools Accelerator to ensure that vaccines will be delivered equally among countries. President Rodrigo Duterte encouraged Filipinos to join advocacies and activities that empower women. The president made this call during an online forum organized by the Philippine Commission on Women in celebration of the National Women's Month. International Women's Day is celebrated every March 8 of each year. I joined the entire nation in celebrating the Women's Month. The government recognizes the role of women in nation-building and upholding the fundamental equality before the law. 
of both genders. This is why we are working relentlessly to ensure that women have equal access to education, economic opportunities, health care, and social services, and growth opportunities. But the work is far from over. Thus, I urge our people to participate in advocacy and activities that promote women empowerment. Let us all work hand in hand to address the needs of women and honor their immense contribution to society. Mabuhay ang ating mga kababaihan. Still to come, amid the easing of travel restrictions, some provinces still require negative RT-PCR test results. And the Labor Department says the no vax, no work policy is illegal. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Pangalagaan ng sarili laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019. Hanggat maaari, umiwas sa mataong lugar. Iwasang hawakan ang ilong at bibig. Maging malinis sa katawan at ugaliin ang wastong paghuhugas ng kamay. Takpan ang ilong at bibig kung uubo o babahing. Umiwas sa mga taong nagpapakita ng sintomas ng coronavirus disease gaya ng lagnat, ubo at sipon. Magsuot ng face mask kung kinakailangan. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. More provincial governments welcome the easing of protocol for local travelers as this would boost domestic tourism in the country. More on this from Chris Chris Mundo. Tourists visiting Boracay Island in Malay Aklan are still required to show negative results of their swab tests. Malay Aklan Mayor Frolibar Bautista said travelers still need to comply with the requirement of the local government unit even with the new protocols released by the National Interagency Task Force. These include the negative results of their reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction or RT-PCR test taken within 72 hours, tourist QR code, and a copy of confirmed booking with a resort or hotel accommodation. Bautista said a recommendation has been submitted to the Boracay Interagency Task Force to shift from swab test to the saliva test as more tourists are expected to come in. In Zamboanga City, documents such as travel authority, medical certificate, and coordination pass have been scrapped except for the RT-PCR negative test result. Mayor Maria Isabel Climaco Salazar said this is due to the unabated COVID-19 cases. In Tacloban City, the local government has welcomed the decision of the IATF to place the city under general community quarantine or GCQ for six months in a row. Mayor Alfred Romualdez said the city's current pandemic situation warrants a more strict movement restriction to prevent the spread of COVID-19. He reiterated his appeal to the residents to continue to wear face masks, shields, and observe safe physical distancing and hand washing. And in Albay, all 18 town mayors welcomed the resolution of the IATF easing travel protocols across the country. Albay Governor Al Francis Bichara, who is also the provincial IATF chairman, said easing travel restrictions is a welcome move to recover the economic losses as a result of the pandemic. Bichara said various local chief executives will now allow antigen test results to be presented by travelers instead of the RT-PCR test, which is more expensive. He said various LGUs of the province are holding a session to draw up strategies to be done at their levels and submit their respective action plan for provincial travel protocols. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Chris Crismundo.
Health authorities in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao said the region is sure to receive vaccines against COVID-19 certified as halal or permissible for the Islam faith. Dr. Amirel Usman, acting head of the BARMM Health Office, said Muslims prefer halal vaccines under Islam. He, however, clarified that the Islamic body may accept any vaccine since it is a human health necessity. He noted that Sinovac is halal as certified by the Indonesian Halal Certification Body. Usman said the Department of Health Central Office assured that BARMM will receive a supply of Sinovac's Coronavac vaccine. He said the Ministry of Health, BARMM, has embarked on a massive information drive to educate the Bangsamoro people that the anti-COVID vaccines are safe and halal. The Department of Health in the Cordillera Administrative Region hopes to vaccinate all its 3,608 hospital workers in the region during the expected rollout on Sunday. DOH Car Assistant Regional Director Dr. Amelita Pangilinan said the vaccine recipients earlier registered with the different government hospitals in the Cordillera. Pangilinan said the choice of hospitals has been based on the number of COVID-19 cases received and attended to by the hospitals. She said the Coronavac vaccines manufactured by Sinovac in China are expected to arrive on Saturday. Pangilinan called on her fellow health workers and hospital frontliners in the region to participate in the vaccination program of the government. Private sector employers who will require their workers to receive coronavirus vaccine before they are allowed inside working areas will be penalized. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III is reacting on the statement of a labor group about the emerging mandatory no vaccination, no work policy being imposed by employers and business owners to employees. Magpapalabas tayo ng ano, department order na kung saan hindi pwedeng doing mandatory yan. Hindi pwedeng mandatory yan. Nasa mga empleyado yan kung gusto niya magpabakuna. O oh, hindi, asa ka niya, hindi pwede gawin mandatory. At eh, pinag-aralan din namin na yung refusal to be vaccinated is not the ground for termination. Hmm. Yun ang pinag-aralan namin. Uh, lalabas po, magpapalabas po tayo ng department order yung tungkol sa pagpapabaksin ng ating mga employees. In a briefing earlier today, Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles also emphasized that while there is an increasing confidence in Sinovac vaccines in the country, vaccination against COVID-19 is optional for everyone. Again, walang pilitan para kay Pangulo Duterte, although uh, talagang ine-encourage niya at ine-encourage ng buong gobyerno ang lahat ng mga kababayan natin na pagdating ng oras, takdang oras na kayo na rin po ay uh, susunod ay nasa linya na nga po uh, na magpapabaku na papabakunahan eh, tanggapin po natin ito ng buong uh, loob uh, at walang pag-alinlangan. Nograles also said that even if travel authority and health certificate are no longer required for domestic travel, a local government unit can still require COVID-19 tests for their inbound travelers. This clarification was made due to confusions resulting from a recent IATF resolution scrapping the mandatory RT-PCR test for local travelers. The general rule is no testing required except if required if if kailangan ng LGU. So it's really up to the LGU. So ibig po sabihin, pag sinabi ng LGU na kailangan pa rin, um, then it has to be RT-PCR. Wala na iba. Wala na yung rapid test, wala na yung antigen, hindi na kailangan yun. It's RT-PCR before travel. Pero papayag rin po ng saliva testing mula sa Red Cross. Kasi yung saliva okay. testing ng Red Cross, yan lang yung tanging saliva testing na RT-PCR na inaprubahan po ng ating uh, IATF at ng... Uh, ng, uh, RITM. In our business news, e-transactions with the Social Security System or SSS increased by more than twice in 2020 as clients grappled with quarantine restrictions due to COVID-19. 
SSS Executive Vice President Judy Francis C. said transactions through electronic channels accounted for 75% of the total in 2020, up from around 35% in the previous year. Registration to the MySSS portal rose by 140% last year from about 1.36 transactions in the previous year, bringing the total to 10.6 million registrations. Relatively, contribution payments done through electronic channels accounted for 99.3% last year. Downloads of the SSS mobile app also jumped by 11 times last year from the 3.12 million downloads as of the end of December 2019. Up next, President Duterte receives his own national ID, and Paranaque is set to have its own basketball arena. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Alamin ang mga dapat gawin sa lugar ng trabaho laban sa coronavirus disease 2019. Ang mga kumpanya ay dapat magbigay ng face mask sa kanilang mga empleyado. Bukod dito, magbigay kaalaman din patungkol sa COVID-19. Siguraduhing malinis ang kapaligiran. Maglagay ng sabon at hand sanitizer sa mga palikuran. Siguraduhing ligtas at nalutong maigi ang mga pagkain sa kantina. Obserbahan ang kalusugan ng mga empleyado at katrabaho. Kung sakali man na mayroon silang sintomas ng coronavirus disease, gaya ng lagnat, ubot sipon at hirap sa paghinga, ay agad ipasuri sa doktor. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Non-essential travelers are now allowed to enter Bacolod City starting Wednesday, provided that they comply with requirements to ensure that health and safety protocols against COVID-19 are followed. Councilor and Tourism Committee Chair Israel Salanga said, Non-essential travel includes leisure or vacation, visiting friends or families, and attending weddings and christenings and other travels not for basic needs. The traveler must present a negative RT-PCR test result, travel itinerary, round-trip ticket and travel details, confirm booking of accommodation or address of residence, backtrack ID, a filled-out online health declaration form, and a notice of coordination. All documents should be emailed to israelsalanga.bcd at gmail.com for the issuance of notice of coordination. And still in Bacolod, some 3,000 healthcare workers will be first to avail of the Sinovac vaccines expected to arrive later this week. Dr. Edwin Miliaflor, officer in charge of the City Health Office, said the vaccines will be delivered to Corazon Loxin Montelibono Memorial Regional Hospital and Dr. Pablo Otore Memorial Hospital. The vaccines are part of the supply allocated to DOH Western Visayas. The city government, meanwhile, made an initial payment of more than 31 million pesos to AstraZeneca for the procurement of 650,000 doses of COVID-19 vaccine. Mayor Evelio Leonardo said the advance payment would ensure the delivery of the vaccine starting the third quarter of the year. Pilipinas Contra Gutom distributed food packs in marginalized communities in Marawi City and Lana del Sur as part of efforts to lower hunger incidents among Filipinos. More on this from Claire Gigge. The Pilipinas Contra Gutom, or PKG, under the Task Force Zero Hunger, distributed a total of 2,100 meal packs from McDonald Kainas Kitchen, or MKK, to Marawi City, while the province of Lano del Sur received 2,000 relief packs from Rice Against Hunger, or RAH, and 1,000 meal packs from MKK. Itong pinamamahagi ngayon ng McDonald's at ang Rice Against Hunger, isa lamang ito sa mga maraming pa nating programa sa ilalim ng Pilipinas kontra Gutom. 
Nograles also stated that PKG now holds 70 partners all pursuing one goal which is zeroing hunger in the country. He further highlighted that with the national government's launching of the PKG, the hunger incidence in the country has already been pulled down to 16% despite the ongoing pandemic. With this, PKG's partners strengthened its commitment to help the movement in its objective. We affirm our commitment to support the hunger um, prevention and nutrition uh, improvement here in the Northern Sur. Kami po ay sumali sa Pilipinas kontra gutom at ang McDonald's through its kindness leche ay kabilang sa founding members ng kilosan nito. Hinihikayat din po namin kayo na tinungan kami sa programang ito dahil sabi nga namin natin sa Pilipinas kontra gutom, lahat kasali lahat the PKG continues to bring food to marginalized communities through the MKK, RAH, and other partners intending to eradicate the problem of hunger by the year 2030. For PNA Newsroom, Claire Gighe of the Philippine Information Agency, Elegant City Information Center. Pope Francis will hold a mass to celebrate with Filipinos in Italy the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines according to the Catholic Bishops Conference of the Philippines or CBCP. Father Ricky Hente of the Filipino Chaplaincy in Rome announced that the religious activity will be highlighted by a 10 a.m. mass to be celebrated by the pontiff at St. Peter's Basilica on March 14. Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle Prefect of the Congregation for the Evangelization of Peoples and Cardinal Angelo de Donatis, the Pope's Vicar of Rome, will be attending the said event. The celebration will be live-streamed from the Vatican to reach Filipinos in different parts of the world. After the Mass, the Pope will lead the traditional recitation of the Angelus Prayer in St. Peter's Square at midday. In the Philippines, many dioceses will launch the year-long commemoration on April 4, Easter Sunday. President Rodrigo Duterte now has his own Philsys national ID. The president received his national ID from NEDA Acting Secretary Carl Kendrick Chua during the cabinet meeting in Malacanang on Wednesday. Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea and Senator Christopher Lorenz Bongo also received their own ID cards. Duterte signed the Philippine Identification System Act or Republic Act No. 1105 in 2018 to establish a single national identification system for all Filipino citizens and resident aliens. The national ID shall be a valid proof of identity that shall simplify transactions, enrollment in schools, opening of bank accounts, and government services. Authorities in Duenas, Iloilo arrested a village chairperson who was identified as a supporter of the New People's Army for illegal possession of firearms. Police and military operatives recovered a grenade, handgun and ammunition from Joe Winnie Giganto, chairperson of Barangay Kalang. The Police Regional Office 6 identified Giganto as an NPA supporter and a leader of a new armed group involved in gun running and spreading loose firearms in Iloilo and nearby provinces. The Regional Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict confirmed that the subject is the brother of Ismael Kabab Giganto, a leader of the NPA faction that led an ambush in Barangay da Ansur, Tapas, Iloilo on February 2003. Giganto is now under the custody of the Criminal Investigation and Detection Group or CIDG in Western Visayas. In sports, Paranaque City is having its own basketball arena, which will be the home of the city's National Basketball League. Mayor Edwin Olivares announced the plan on Tuesday for the city to build a coliseum that will be the official home court of the Paranaque Aces. The new arena will stand beside the Paranaque City College at the corner of Cavitex and Victor Medina Street, making it close to Baclaran, the shared business district of Paranaque and Pasay City. It will have a seating capacity of 5,000 to enable everyone to support their home team. Paranaque, which won the inaugural NBL title in 2018, looks to take the men's title back this season as the league looks to holding its games in a bubble.
Here's another look at today's biggest stories. A sign of unrest, FIVOX raises alert level 1 over Mount Pinatubo but says an eruption is far from reality. After Metro Manila, other parts of the country are also gearing up for the rollout of their COVID-19 vaccination drives. Amid the easing of travel restrictions, some provinces still require negative RT-PCR test results. And no mandatory inoculation for workers, the Labor Department says a no-vaccine, no-work policy affirms is illegal. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check more news content, visit our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, we tell stories that inspire change. I'm William Theo. Good day and stay safe, everyone.